Let's go back to our conversation with Bill Cohen, author of House of Cards, the definitive book on the collapse of Bear Stearns. Bill is also a Bloomberg contributing editor. And Bill, we're looking ahead to the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission. Jimmy Kane, Alan Schwartz appearing before the panel. Uh, let me ask you this. If the panel really wanted to get to the heart of what went wrong at Bear Stearns, what should they be asking? Well, Eric, what they should be thinking about, what they should be asking about is why did Bear Stearns, why did Jimmy Kane and Alan Schwartz and Warren Spector allow the firm to get so big in mortgages, and why did they use those mortgages to finance the firm in the overnight markets? Why didn't they get longer-term financing? Why didn't they diversify their business to other products besides mortgages in a bigger way? Let's go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, one of the, the fireworks or sort of conflicting potential conflicting language I'm looking forward to is we've heard Kane in the past blame Spectre. How much do you think what each of those people say is going to contradict one another, if at all? Well, first of all, you'll notice that uh, Warren Spectre is on the first panel. Uh, and Jimmy Kane and Alan Schwartz are on the second panel. So they won't be sitting together, so we won't be able to see any physical they fireworks. Hate each other. They have to. Oh, well, J Jimmy fired Warren in August 2007 at the height of the of Bears' problems after the hedge funds had collapsed. He was just the person you wanted to keep there, not the guy you wanted to fire. He knew exactly where all the bodies were buried in the mortgage department. And what did Jimmy do? He fires them because they were playing bridge in Nashville together. Uh, so whether there'll be fireworks, you know, I don't know. I think at this point, Warren Spector is so careful about what he says. He hasn't said basically anything in public. He's not going to say much today. So he's today he's very not going to throw up. Kane uh, under the bus. <laughs> he's going to follow J.P. Morgan and Jim Glassman, Glassman under right. the bus. Yes, could be. You know, I want to throw a curveball at you for a moment, uh -oh. Bill. Do you think, do you think, this is pure speculation, but mm -hmm. do you think these uh, members of the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission are going to ask Jimmy Kane if he smokes pot? Because we all remember that Wall Street Journal story. Mm, yes. You know, Jimmy smoking pot well, at, a, at a bridge tournament. My, get, my gut tells me they won't even bring it up. Uh, it's probably not that relevant to what happened in the financial crisis. And of course, he, you know, he denied that to me, although I suspect that it's true. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's turn our attention to conspiracy theories because we've heard plenty of these as they concern Bear Stearns, as they concern Lehman Brothers. During the Goldman hearings last week, there was an exchange between Senator Tom Coburn and Josh Birnbaum of Goldman Sachs in which they discussed Goldman's uh, strategic products group shorting uh, or at least a, 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 an approach that they took to hedging themselves by shorting uh, several things, including the ABX index, single name, asset-backed securities. They went long credit default swaps on a number of single names, but, 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 and this is the key, right? They also shorted a bunch of stocks that had, uh, call it a high beta to the subprime mortgage collapse. And that list of stocks included a bunch of mortgage originators, but it also included Bear Stearns. Yes. I mean, this is a, this is a strategy that they uh, started first all those shorts that you talked about, the buying the credit default swaps, in December of 2006, January of 2007, they started shorting individual stocks, buying puts on individual stocks in March of 2007, one of which, uh, 2007, correct, of one of which was uh, uh, Bear Stearns, which, you know, uh, you know, is, is, could be viewed as just sort of a, a reflection of their views that the whole mortgage market was collapsing and any firms with mortgage exposure uh, were going to go down too. You, you know, there was such pressure on them to to pull back from their shorts as well, believe it or not. I mean, while they were making money on these shorts, Vineyard and Blankfein and others were saying, you guys have to get back to flat, you know, not be so short, not be so long, and so they had to unwind some but, of these but things. But what role did Goldman play, do you think, by virtue of that and other things and in Bear's downfall? Right. I mean, as I, as I describe in the book, I mean, uh, Goldman marked its securities down further than anybody else. Uh, Bear Stearns was a big buyer of these CDO securities, including 300 million of the Timberwolf CDO in there March. There we go. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> That's what I've been waiting to talk about, Timberwolf. Which got Those were the, down in, in April. the four-letter word, uh, expletive, et cetera, exactly. rhyming with pretty that we heard about That's during exactly Goldman's thanks to Tom, Tom Montag. So Goldman absolutely, I think, exacerbated the problems at the Bear Stearns hedge fund, which, of course, led in part to Bear's default. So, I mean, I don't think they caused it, I think they exacerbated it.